So I actually had an agent reach out to me and he said that if I stop posting these depressing stats, maybe I would get more listings. <laughs> um, I do okay, but uh, I think it seems kind of a sneaky way to make a living if you're going to be hiding all this stuff from the public. Um, so obviously I did not take his advice because I am back with another depressing market update. Well, I guess, I mean, it's only depressing if you're on the seller side. I mean, if you're on the buying side, it's great news. So um, a lot of the stats that agents have access to the public doesn't see public mostly just sees the prices um, I'm gonna give you guys those stats um, so what we're gonna look at is number of sales uh, I'm gonna compare it to winter as well uh, cancellations which you guys don't see um, how many listings are getting canceled for one reason or another um, either they were not getting the price they were hoping for so they just took it off the market or they've had to cancel it and they're gonna relist it as a new listing so that's important to know um, because it kind of gives you a better pulse of the market. Average prices, obviously, we're going to be covering that. Um, days on market, how long are things sitting on the market for? Because if you guys are making plans on buying another house, moving somewhere else, you want to know, okay, is the house going to sell in one week or is it going to take two months to sell? Okay, so that's important. And um, believe it or not, there are a bunch of homes still selling over asking price. Uh, now it's nothing like not even close to um, the winter time from January to May you can see every single category is down detached semi detached freeholds like every single one is down mostly peaked in February and since then like semis are in dark gray every single category is down so now uh, number of sales uh, this is important um, because historically December January February are always the slowest months of the year so that's the winter season you have Christmas you have New Year's you have the snowstorms so they're always the slowest time of the year and March April May are always the busiest because that's considered the spring market and a little bit little bit of time in June as well so that is how it's supposed to be it's supposed to be like slow and then really really high in the springtime but we seem to be going the wrong way because uh, look at February 918 look at March 928 March was still good but as you guys all remember uh, we had two rate hikes um, in March and then in April and now the one that just came in in June we won't feel the effect for like a month or so so March was busy and then the rate hikes came in and boom 716 and May has been the slowest month so far this year that is not good news if you guys are trying to sell your house please be aware of these stats I'm not saying the market's dead like I said before good homes are still selling and some multiple offers are still going on so you will be able to sell your house you just got to price it according to today's market not uh, if an agents promising you you know like the moon and the stars uh, 20 multiple offers um, that's probably not gonna happen so uh, please be aware of these stats uh, when you're thinking of selling your house so May has been the slowest month of the year so far which is not good because it's usually one of the busiest April May are always the busiest months and we'll see what happens in June now this is uh, how many listings took longer than two weeks to sell okay so what I've done is I just took down did some basic math I took all the number of sales that happened on the MLS uh, for Brampton and what I did was I just punched in how many took longer than two weeks to sell so only 41 took longer than two weeks February 45 those are very low numbers because you as you remember like everything was flying off the shelf everything like didn't matter what kind of house you had it was gone in under a week now look at this March and April and uh, May it's going the wrong way if because spring is supposed to be the busiest time so out of everything that's available for sale in May and sold 198 of them took longer than two weeks to sell these are not available listings these are sold already okay so 198 of them took longer than two weeks to sell now in a normal market that's nothing abnormal like um, for a listing to take like two three four weeks to sell that's nothing unusual uh, but like I mentioned before um, because of the crazy market we've had I just thought it was uh, important to bring this up okay so how many listings got canceled in the month of May there's usually two reasons why a listing gets canceled one is you know um, they just tried the market because they saw oh the market's crazy busy let me jump in there before it flattens out and they realized like okay I'm not gonna get the winter price and they just took it off the market you they're like you know what I'll just stay put it's not worth to sell 
So that's number one. Uh, second reason could be that they were not selling and then uh, maybe the agent recommended that they cancel the listing and relist it as a new listing. Um, so that might have happened. So those the, usually those are the two reasons a listing gets canceled. Uh, look at January. Almost nothing got canceled because everything was selling. So there was no reason to cancel the listing. February a little bit higher. March, April, May. Uh, so the reason I'm showing you guys these stats is you guys are smart. You guys can see which way the trend is going. Uh, I expect June maybe even a little higher than this. So these three stats I think are very important to know if you guys are thinking of buying or selling because uh, if you're buying now you have some leverage, you have some power, you do not need to be panicking and offering two, three hundred thousand dollars over asking. So a number of sales is down. Uh, how long things are s sitting on the market? That's way up. And um, cancellations of listings that is also up. Now. This is just a bit of a market share, like detached homes obviously uh, make up most of the market in Brampton. Condos are very low. Uh, semis are at about 21%. And here's a chart I've been uh, kind of uh, developing over the last uh, few months. So this is from January of last year, January 2021 to May of this year. You can see like it was kind of okay, like everything was going okay. And then right around October is when it just like peaked. So this is for detached homes, freehold townhouses, and condos. Everything peaked in February, like January, February, and then it's been going down steadily ever since. Now, this is what everybody came for. Maybe I should have put these up first, uh, so I'm sorry about that. But I just thought you guys should know the other stuff more because that's like, it gives you a better pulse of the market day to day. Okay, so detached homes are down about almost $300,000 since January. Okay, so these are average prices. Um, I will probably post uh, median prices as well, uh, but these are just average prices for now. So they're down almost 300 grand since January. Same thing for semi-detached. They're down about $200,000 since January, selling at about a million dollars in May. Freehold townhouses. Uh, they finally dropped below the million dollar mark. Now, I've been selling for a long, long time, and I grew up in Brampton. And you could pick up like freehold townhouses for like two hundred grand. Like I'm this, I'm talking about like twenty years ago or so. Uh, so, <laughs> for them to be close to a million dollar mark, like that's insane. And that's after the drop. You know, they dropped one hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars just this year. But that's still amazing. Like uh, for a freehold townhouse in Brampton, that's insane. Condo townhouses uh, down sixty seven thousand um, dollars. Still selling at a great price, like eight hundred thousand dollars for a condo townhouse in Brampton. So they're down as well, uh, not as badly as detached homes, obviously. Uh, condos not doing too badly. Uh, they're down only like six grand since January. Now, for any agent who likes to think I just like to sensationalize the news and uh, you know just post stats in a certain way to make them look uh, catchy, uh, that's not the case because. I'm doing every comparisons to January because I just wanted to do like just for 2022. So I'm doing every comparison to January and if I wanted to sensationalize the news, I would have compared it to February. Uh, look at the February uh, a stat here, 693. You know, so if I wanted to sensational, oh, wow, the market's crashing and stuff, I would have compared it to February and not even mention the January number. You know, so um, now, so those are the stats. Uh, I do want to kind of leave on a good note. It's not all bad news. Though. Now, if you guys want to look at this one here, um, if you guys want some good news, if you're thinking of selling, 49% of homes in sold in May still sold over asking. Now, compare that to January and February, it's dropped by almost half. You know, so like everything was selling over asking. Like it didn't matter what you had. You could ask any price and it would sell over asking. But it's gone down almost 50% in the since uh, January February now a bit of a disclosure here um, this does not mean uh, that this things are selling like a hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars over asking this just means that it's selling over asking so it could be like five thousand over asking uh, so that's my disclosure there like it is not this might be still selling over asking but it's not like the winter so it's, it might be like two thousand dollars over asking so 
if I have not depressed you guys enough, uh, realtorvic.ca is where you can find me if you guys need to buy and sell. Um, but I will promise to just be honest with all the stats and stuff because I think it's better you guys just know upfront what what you're walking into, right? Because you want to know, okay, is the house going to sell in seven days or two months? And um, am I going to sell for like 1.5 or 1.2? So those are big numbers that you guys want to be aware of before you put the house up for sale and start planning your future, you know, based on 1.5, whereas the house is worth 1.2. Um, because sometimes it might not make sense to sell. So this is where I shoot myself in the foot, as always. <laughs> as a salesman, you never say that. You never tell a client, ah, don't sell. Uh, but anyways, I think it's better to know the truth before you guys plan all your stuff. Uh, Realtorvic.ca is where you can find me. And uh, yeah, I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.